So in this exercise, let's have a look at brightening areas using the curves adjustment and a little bit of inverting. Now, if we go carefully through this, and this is on the iPad, mind you, I've done one on the PC desktop, but the iPad version, it's a little more difficult to find the controls you want. So I'll point you at that. Now, I've got an image on here straight from Pixabay, I think it was, in the stock studio. And you can see the riverbed and the area underneath the building is quite dark and the roses are quite dark. It's probably late evening and this area is in deep shadow. But if you took this photograph yourself, you're probably trying to highlight that river and, the, and that understory area. So we need to brighten it up a little bit. Now, first off, to do this, we've got the image there. Don't have to do anything special. Now, I've got the adjustments options here and I want to start with a curves adjustment. So we tap that there and just move the curves adjustment. You can see it's brightening things up quite a lot there. Now, the main picture has gone really quite bright and that's far too bright, but what we have got is the understory area there, underneath the buildings, just above the riverbed. Now that's quite bright. So let's leave that the way it is for the moment. Touch anywhere. Okay, gets rid of that. Now we've got a, an image that's far too bright. So we go to there and what we've got here is the curves adjustment layer. Now select that layer. That's the layer we want because we want to invert that layer. Now we go down to the channels. You can see there on the right hand side about mid-range channels. We're going to select the channels and you can see it says layer curves adjustment. Now that's the one we want. Tap the three dots beside it and you can see at the top of that list of options we've got invert. So we invert that layer and it changes it back to what it was. Now here's the trick. What we want is a round brush. So we go over to the left hand side. Now I've got the options set there. Opacity is 100%, accumulation is 100%. The middle one, we've got hardness at zero and flow at about 29 to 30%. And the bottom one, the width, 333, well, give or take, 340. So it's a fairly large brush and we want it white, which is perfect because if you paint white, you can see it removes the mask in that area. And now we can bring back the brightness of that understory area so that I can see the river nice and clear there. Bring that over there. Now be careful with the brush because if you go over too much, you will be brightening areas that you don't want brightened. Now you can see that's brought up the, the river really quite nicely there and the understory area. You can see all those little windows in there little bit more there. You can adjust the size, of course, of your brush. That's easily done, but that's not too bad. Quite bright along there, a bit more down over this right-hand side, perhaps. There we go. Now you can see that what we've got there is a curves adjustment that's been inverted. So that we can put in that lightness. Now what I want to do is do the same thing again. Go back to the brush and reduce the width to very small, about 10, because what I want to do is bring up the roses. See how I've got the roses are coming up there?
Nice red roses being brought out there and along the bridge over here. Let's bring this up a little bit. There's some more roses up on the windowsills there. And some more over there. Just supposing that you've taken this photograph and what you want to do is highlight some of the features in the area. And obviously those red roses growing on the windowsills, and there's quite a few more of them there, but you can overdo it, remember. But these ones here are very nice. Now you've brought the river up. Let's go to there. Get rid of that, get rid of that. Now there's a nice image there. Let's enlarge that a little bit. Quite different to the original image. Let's remove that or hide that. You can see there's the original image. And you can see the inverted mask on there. And there it is back again. There's the original image. Now what we could do, if we wanted to do some more on there, I believe, is put another curved layer on there. Curves layer. Bring the brightness up there, something terrible. Which is what we want. We can now hide that. We can go back there and you can see we've got another curves adjustment just here. We select that layer Go to the Curves Adjustment layer and invert it again. Now we've got the original bright layer there that we were working with and everything in the understory is really bright. But we can use this one again to bring out some more features. There's the paintbrush is still set about the same. The width is quite small, which is what we want. Because what I want to do is enlarge it slightly and go through very carefully and find some of those other roses there. At least I think they're roses. Maybe they're not. Maybe there's something else. And there's any other little floral options there that you can see that we can bring up. You could probably make those trees there pop a little bit. Let's make the trees pop a little bit by bringing the width up too high. You can see the little circle there. 42, that'll do. Now let's bring these trees up. Now you can see how much... I don't want to do the entire tree, just just touch the tree as if there's a little bit of sunlight shining through a cloud. And you can see there that you've got sunlight coming through a cloud and lighting up those trees in the background. It's really neat how you can do that and bring out the colours in an image like that. Now, if I reduce that down in size again, because I'm on an iPad Mini 6 here. There you go. You can see those trees have just been lit up in the background there. Isn't that wonderful? Very nice. Let's go back to the Move tool so we can see everything. And there it is there. Now, that's all there is to that, really. A nice little exercise in using an adjustment layer, the Curves tool which we don't want. We can just step back out of that. And inverting it, remember the in inversion is in the channels 
and there's no layer selected there, so you can't see it. But let's go select the layer. Now there's a layer selected. Go into channels. There's the curves, the second one from the bottom, and we can invert that layer. Let's just back out of that. There we go. Okay, that's the end of this neat little exercise.